The hour of 7 o'clock. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. We lost our chief today, Chief Eagle Heart. Peter Archer has gone from this teepee to the big wigwam in the sky. This is the opening to a very touching post shared by Managing Director of Radio Tambourine, George Leacock, on the passing of his friend, veteran masquerader and craftsman, Mr. Peter Archer. And we are checking in with Mr. Leacock this morning. Mr. Leacock, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Now. Uh, good morning, good morning, and um, you threw me off because I, sa I started hearing you saying things that I say, wait a minute, that sounded familiar. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you thought I was citing you and not quoting where it came from. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lika, right. good morning. A pleasure to have you join us this morning. Um, so uh, I, I, I read, the reason why I started this segment with that is because I realized that you had a very personal relationship with Mr. Archer, more than many, um, especially in the mass fraternity. And I wanted to know who he was to you, because I like that you mentioned the big wigwam in the sky. You mentioned things like rubber speech and that sort of thing. He even helped you when you uh, entered your first Pretty Mask competition. And I wanted to get your thoughts on him. Who was he to you? Well, for whatever reason, I've been lucky in my life to be surrounded by a number of passionate people, passionate about everything. And maybe to demonstrate Peter's passion not just for carnival let me point out to you that after uncle mikey Dumas, he was a big beekeeper in tobago that everybody knew about i know it's very much in vogue these days a number of people are you know wearing bees and doing honey and all that kind of stuff but he did it at a time when basically everybody was scared of going around bees because they're gonna get stung then he has also he also used to take care of goats and people mm -hmm. always spoke about his goats, the, the kind of quality goats and his goat milk. Mm -hmm. And if you got goat milk from Peter Archer, it was a special kind of goat milk that you're going to get and all of that. Mm -hmm. So imagine now translating that passion for life that is symptomic of what Peter was all about yeah. to carnival. He was best known for playing Indian mass, but I have recordings from him taken on Radio Tamron, saying complete rubber speeches from other persons. Mm -hmm. um, think about that for a moment. In the absence of radio in those days and television, to hear something or to have it recorded on your phone and hear it over and over, to imagine that somebody else actually at some point in time must have followed around yeah. another uh, person playing rubber match to learn their entire speech. He also, um, let me just um, make a point that the Tambrin and Speech Band are original carnival arts in Tobago, mm -hmm. and he would repeat speech band speeches and all of that. So um, in a sense, he could have played any kind of mass, but the Indian mass was his passion. Mm -hmm. And passion like everything that he did. He was very good friends with Lionel Jagasa. And when I spoke to Lionel Jagasa Jr. a couple of days ago, because of course we're planning a going home ceremony like no other mm -hmm. for the 26th, next Tuesday, the 26th of noon, right. um, Lionel Jagasa Jr. told me that the first time he left his home in Trinidad to travel anywhere was actually to come to Tobago and stay at Peter Archer's home. Mm. And he said when his father died, Lionel Jagasa Sr., yeah. Peter called him and prayed with him in a native Indian language that was taught to Peter by Lionel Jagasa's father. Um, bear in mind that Peter also traveled to Oklahoma and yes. lived with North American uh, uh, indigenous people yeah. on reservations. Or no, on I'm, what I'm, he used Mr. Leacock, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that you mentioned he traveled to, to Oklahoma and lived with the people. Because I know one of the conversations mm. people have these days is cultural appropriation, right? How people are using other people's culture and their, their identity for their own, sort of, um, their own sort of benefit. And so you would have addressed that as well in your, in your, in your, your post to Peter, stating that what he did was not appropriation because there was some sort of authenticity that he did it with. And so I wanted you to just expand on that a bit further. How is it that he was not appropriate? Operating, but rather showing respect to the traditional uh, characters that he portrayed. 
Well, this is a debate that started in Toronto a few years ago, and a number of people have weighed in on it already. And because I was going to do the response, and because I lived in Canada, I went to school with a number of uh, Canadian uh, Indigenous persons. I am very careful about, um, you know, all of those things. So mm -hmm. I said, let me say that up front. Um, I do not believe that any part of Trinidad and Tobago's carnival could be categorized as what is called cultural appropriation. And simply because in Trinidad and Tobago, we, I think we grew up with people who had this huge sense of history. And this huge sense of, of curiosity, um, you hear, uh, of other mass men in Tobago portraying bands that that uh, depicted the lost city of this and lost tribes and that. It has always been a celebration and admiration uh, of those people. In other words, maybe it's a competition element that makes you want to do that. If you're going to participate in a competition and so on, and you want to celebrate something in that competition, you are going to look for something that you think is great, right? And what people, um, what 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 people did. So what people like Peter did is yeah. that they did their research. In you referred to me playing in the Putty Mask competition, where I played Rain in the Face, Rain yes. in the Face. Uh, all the people, the young. Um, Reggae, I don't remember the name of the songs with no rain in the face was the leader of the Apaches Apache. and all mm -hmm. of that. And um, I started off and doing my research, like, you know, um, I suppose ordinary surface level research. I was very pleased to discover that rain in the face um, actually attended a conference to discuss moving his tribe onto a reservation. Mm -hmm. And when the pictures were colorized, he was actually in red, white, and black. So oh. I like that. Um, and that's why I went with that particular person to, to portray. Yeah. When I called Peter on the telephone and I said, um, Peter, I want to play Rain in the Face. He knew everything about Rain in the Face <laughs> off the top of his head. Now, Mr. Leacock, we, right? we, we have six to and move. A half <laughs> yeah. Now, Mr. Leacock, we unfortunately we have to move quickly along. But mm -hmm. I understand the passion that you're saying in terms of what he had and how he was able to help you with your pretty mass competition. But before we go, I wanted to know what we can do to honor a man like Mr. Archer, a man who, I mean, he had the rubber speech, who could talk in the native language. He went across to Oklahoma and he brought back that authenticity. How can we honor such a cultural icon? Is it just okay to put up a statue? I mean, what else can we do? Okay, so... That has been something that is challenging us as a nation for the longest while. And we are currently engaged in a, a debate about Tobago Carnival, whether it's in February or whether it's in November and all of that. And to me, that is really a, a non-debate. Anybody who suggests that Tobago should not have Carnival in February, is somebody who really doesn't understand their history mm -hmm. and doesn't understand even what the objectives of the Tobago House of Assembly was in having carnival in um, October. The carnival in October is basically for tourists, mm -hmm. right? But they are historical things, they're traditional things, they're parts of our culture, they're parts of um, carnival, is, is the spiritual part of carnival and all of that um, takes place within a certain melee within a certain place at a certain time. And a lot of what I have heard, unfortunately, is day-to-day -day disrespect of Daruni, day-to-day -day disrespect of Peter Archer, day-to-day -day disrespect of Wilton Nancy's, day-to-day -day disrespect of Brady, day-to-day -day disrespect of, of Dairimple, day-to-day -day disrespect of Roy Poole. So then, Mr. Lika, um, how, can we, how, so then how can we change the conversation? Character. How can then we change the conversation change from this disrespect to honor? So, I got to go with Justice Lucky. 
we have to get our cultural icons, their contributions, and the information about them in schools. Mm -hmm. Statues are fine, but statues don't mean anything if they, they don't refer to anything that people currently understand. And I, I am sure that those gentlemen have in their time, the gentlemen I mentioned, Beng and all those people, in their time um, made contributions that are worthwhile of appreciation and honor. And not really running about and finding them two weeks before a festival and sticking a microphone in front of their face and saying that, you know, you're recording them. You really have to put aside the time, the effort, and the research to discover what they have done. Um, there are some among us that have pictures. Um, I don't even want to talk about that because that's a particularly vexing topic because I understand <laughs> that some of these yes. pictures have been destroyed and all of that. Yeah. But that in order for honors to, be, to make sense, they should inspire the next generation. And if they are to inspire the next gen generation, we have, of course, to look at what the other generation has done and document it properly. I think that would be the greatest honor of the individual because anytime I needed historical information, that was one of the persons that I would call and at the drop of a hat, he could tell he me would who be able played to tell you. what, what, yeah, yeah, and all of that. And yeah. that's what well, is Mr. important Leacock. in my well, that's where we're going to end it for now. Thank you so much for just appearing on the show and letting us know exactly who Peter really, really, truly was. And so we do appreciate you spending the time this morning. Just to confirm, his funeral service is going to be on, is it January 26th at noon? January 26th, high noon. Um, funeral parade from Radio Tambourine to the Scarborough City Church. Right. Okay. Grand scenario, Indian. Thank you so much, Mr. Leacock. Have a good day. Have a good day, too. And that was director of Radio Tambrin, of course, Mr. George Leacock, just sharing some thoughts, some memories, and teaching us how we can honor our cultural icons. And, of course, remembering the great man that he was, Mr. Peter Archer. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. Oh,